Here's the grill for the front of the Caterpillar. And I'm already taking off this uh, cover here that exposes this pump, but I'm gonna pull the grill off. So it's got bolts here, here, and here. And then a few along here. Looks like it's missing a couple here. So we're gonna pull this off and I think I can just tip it forward. So I think I can tip it forward and, and let it rest against this. And I'll put a board below it to catch it in case it does fall. Should be good. And I don't think the radiator itself is bolted to the grill. So we should be good there too. Guess we'll find out. Thank God for the right tool. Little bit of a mouse nest right there. But then there is the gr or the radiator. Leverage, baby. It's what built all the early civilizations. All right, so this is the pan that basically is the guard for the front of the machine. I'm gonna drop it down so I can get access to the bottom of the radiator a little bit easier. So as you can imagine, there are a lot of like broken bolts that never got taken out or dealt with because they just want to slam it together. So when I first started messing with the coolant, I basically I took this valve out and was able to get it out and clean it all up and put it back in, but I couldn't get that shut off or uh, basically there's a shut off valve right there. And it was rounded over for many years and I couldn't get anything on it because there's just no room to work. And so I'm gonna deal with that as well. There's two bolts that should be here and there. And they're both missing on that side. So on this side, there's one bolt missing here and then this one's so loose, I can just move it with my fingers. And the bottom of the radiator is this yellow painted area. And honestly, it doesn't look that bad. Looks to me like there's a gasket right here underneath this bar with all these bolts on it that probably goes all the way around the bottom of where the core meets the frame. So this is considered the radiator core. It's what coolant flows through and as air flows across the cooling fins, 
it removes the heat from the engine, essentially. And so these go bad, they have problems, they get, they get dinged up. Um, but I think we're going to tear a little further into the radiator and I don't, I am optimistic here. I'm optimistic that a gasket and maybe some RTV or something will be, uh, all this baby needs. Hoping I don't have to take it out. Luckily though, sitting right there is another radiator. Don't know how good it is either, but I've got it. I think this is just a, a gasket to keep dust out of this area, so I think I can safely take that off. that the water came out of right here worries me. So now we can see a little closer. So this is the bottom of the radiator. There is a lot of crud in there, but it's really not too bad. And then this is the bottom of the actual core. I'm wondering if there's a leak right here along the bottom edge. I have to clean it up first. The gasket itself doesn't look too bad. Definitely looks like there's a uh, something going on right around there. So at some point, somebody has had this apart and they've had to fix it. And so one of the repairs that can be done is, on older machinery, I've seen this before, is they'll solder certain veins closed because they have a leak somewhere up along the top. And instead of trying to find a leak there, they just close the whole vein. And so there's one, two, three here. And over here, there's one, two, three, four, five closed. So worst case scenario, I find that I have been in a situation like that, I could close one of the veins. Now, I think to do it properly, I'd probably have to take the top off as well and close it both up and down so there's no water going into it on either side. Um, I could probably get away with just doing it on one side, but I don't like to cut corners if I can avoid it because usually when I cut corners, it bites me. 
and I end up doing it again. So, so here's the bottom of the radiator. And it looks fine. So you start looking at the edges of the veins. Cracked open all along here. Just on the bottom row. What I think happened, a lot of the mounting bolts for this radiator and the radiator cover and the grill and the, the everything was just barely bolted together. And I think the radiator was allowed to just shake. And I think that it shook enough that it cracked all of these along the row. I and mean, there's just too many for it to be an accident. I mean, we're talking from about right there all the way to there. Here, all the way to here. And I don't think it went any further because they'd already added some solder on these ones down here. So... I think that's actually a pretty good problem. I think I'm going to fix it up, solder them up, and go from there. So the goal here is to make this metal shiny. That's how clean we need it. I just spent some time straightening open and folding all of the veins back to about straight so that they will be right where I want them to be once I solder, but also so that they can, you know, not restrict cooling flow once we go to actually put this back in and use it. And so a lot of them had been bent over and kind of mangled a little bit. so. But this will also get in those folds out of the way, allows me to get in there one more time with the wire brush and get the last little bit of dirt and corrosion off of this metal before we start prepping it for, uh, for the solder. All the ones with dashes are ones that have cracks, basically on this bottom row. The middle row is pretty dang good, other than right there, there might be a small little pinhole that I might put some solder in. The ones with the dots, so there's like four here with dots these have lines and then all the middle have dots and then these have lines so the ones with lines are ones I'm fairly certain if not completely positive there's a crack the ones with dots are it's kind of a question mark it might be totally fine and so honestly while I'm in here I'm probably just going to go ahead and solder around every vein on this this whole row and every vein along the top row and then this spot I don't want to have to tear it apart and do it again, so might as well do it all once. So this is muriatic acid, and we're going to use it to clean and wipe down the top of this. Very, very corrosive, very, very dangerous stuff, if not used properly. All right, so we are going to solder up the radiator using uh, just this map gas torch that I have and a soldering tip on it. This soldering tip has not been 
uh, used yet. So we've got to clean up any debris or anything on it, and we're going to tin it. So basically, it's you essentially cover it with with solder so that it basically has the ability to release it when it's onto the other part. And so we've got this knocker road soldering paste. Basically, it's flux, and you want flux that contains zinc chloride and so I've got this old school can of it and then I've got this much much newer uh, actual liquid flux and we'll see what works well but we've got keister acid core solder I heard works very well and I just happen to have some so I have such an area to cover I think it'll be easier without this tip Okay, here's where I'm at. So basically I've flowed the flux pretty much through all of them. I haven't cleaned this area of the flux up yet. I'm about to do that. And then I've got a little bit runoff on the edge of the where the gasket's going to go. So I'll just heat that and wipe it. Um, but I think that this is going to work. I truly think we've got a good bond all the way through. I've done multiple layers and fluxed the heck out of it. And so... We'll see. Much cleaner. All right, now I got pretty much everything filled in that I want. I'm just gonna clean it up with a wire brush and go from there. So the bottom of the radiator is fully soldered, cleaned up. This is a brass radiator, so that's why you see the goldish color around the rim. But I pretty much flowed solder around each and every single tube. I figured while I was in there, I might as well. Do you ever have those moments in life when every single part of your intelligence is telling you to go that one step further and do that one next step so that when you get this finished you will basically have confidence in whatever it is that you've been doing. Well right here is that situation for me. At this moment this side is done. I don't know if there's a leak on the top or not because this is the bottom and I really every part of my Wanting to get past this part in the project is telling me just leave it alone, leave it alone, leave it alone. But my intelligence is saying take it apart even if you have to make a new gasket just to see if you have any problems up there. And so that's where I'm at. I'm going to take it off and we'll find out if there's any issues on the top. Well, I'm gonna need a new gasket. Kinda of figured that. I sure am glad I listened to that smart, intelligent side of me because, see that fin's cracked right there, that one's cracked right there, there, here. 
it's basically about like the other side. So I'm gonna pretty much have to do the same thing twice. And had I not opened this up and looked at the top, I would have gotten it to the point where I could use it and then it would have leaked and I wouldn't have gotten it perfect and it would have wasted my time. So, so now we're going to do this right. We're going to solder this side just like we did the other. I went through and just real gently with this screwdriver straightened these fins out best I could. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow better airflow through the radiator so that the cooling gets done more efficiently. But more important than that to me at this moment is that I'm checking every single spot where there's a dent or a ding and trying to see if there's a leak in the actual tube, the vein in there. These fins themselves don't don't uh, hold any any liquid. It's the the three rows of of uh, veins that do that the water flows up and down through. And so, in doing that, I was able to really see every single dent and damage and find. And so far, I haven't found any spots where I think there's going to be a leak in the actual face of the tubes, um, like I thought there were going to be on the ends. So. I think we're in good shape. We're gonna flush it out a little bit more, clean it up a little bit more, and then make some gaskets and see how it goes. So now I'm going to run a tap through each one of these holes so that I can make sure that the threads are clean and that the bolt will get a nice strong bond into the head of this. Get all the junk out of it from all the years of it not being uh, taken care of. So. So if you're curious about this, this is just a, a tap that I had and I had a nut and I just kind of tapped it on, made sure it was uh, nice and straight and then I clamped it in a vise and just soldered, threw some flux in there and soldered right around it so that I can use a socket 
or a ratchet on this. And when I use this impact, this impact has the ability to just snap this off like nothing. And so, I mean, this is one of the highest rated, most powerful battery impacts you can buy. Now, right now I've only got it set to one. And then I am very, very, very lightly feathering this trigger and feeling and watching for any movement and then I stop. And then I do the rest with the, with the, the ratchet wrench to avoid breaking this uh, tap here in the, in the top of the coolant tank. And the reason I'm using the impact is to make things quicker. Because I got a lot of these to do, and I already did the other ones on the actual uh, bottom coolant tank that's actually in the machine still. Just I did it just like this. Because there's 40 of these to do. And so anything you can do to make things go quicker, smoother, is always good. Well, it can be. Sometimes it can be bad. And when I pull it out, sometimes it comes out just coated in like gunk from the bottom of that hole. And so what I do is basically just hit it with some compressed air just to clean it off before I go putting it in the next one. All right, there's a little bit of uh, roughness on this gasket surface. So I'm just gonna use a little lubricant here and just take the file across it real gently. I just made this gasket using the ball peen method. And so I'm gonna show you how I did it on the other gasket that I need to make for the bottom of the radiator. All right, so this is the bottom of the radiator still installed in the machine. I decided against taking it out um, if I could avoid it. So we're gonna clean this up and then we're gonna get to creating the new uh, gasket here right on the machine. I don't have a shop vac with me, so I'm gonna do my best. This is a magnet, I'm trying to get all the little crap. I spent yo most of yesterday failing to get this plug right here out. This is a drain plug for the lower side of the coolant tank. This is where you would drain all the coolant out. There's a hole right below it that when you drain it, it comes out. Well, I tried everything. I worked on this for probably five or six hours and just couldn't get it. Failure after failure of different trying different things. And so I don't believe in failure. I believe in obstacles in the way of success. And so Today, I brought some better tools, namely a little welder, and I got the generator. And so the plan is going to be to weld a nut onto it so that I've got something to grip onto and try and get it out. When I first started, I got it out, or I got it moving a little bit with a pipe wrench, but I could never get a good enough grip again. 
And so somebody before me, even before I messed this up, had already been trying to do this. And they gunked it up with all this like sealant crap and, you know, as a Band-Aid. Well, I plan to flush this radiator once I get it all put back together and under use. And so I want that plug out. Now, I do have an, another entire radiator here. And I could have just thrown that in there. But I don't know the condition of it. And so that's why I went to the trouble to repair the one that was on it. But right down here is where the, this plug goes. And this is the plug I'm trying to get out right now. So essentially, it's got, you know, a hex head, or it did at one point. And so the plan is, once I get that one out, is to put this one in. And so we're going to basically weld some a nut on the end of it and try and get it out that way. the nut on there let's see how we did well that try didn't work time to go again All right, I got it out quite a few turns, but I started mangling up the nut I put there. We're gonna give a pipe wrench another shot. Now that I've got a little more to grip onto. Almost there. I think we're there. Oh, heck yes. When you fail, when you actually do fail, and you don't succeed, and you try hard, and then you come back, and you try again, and you succeed like this, you get this out, whatever this is for you in your life, it makes it so much sweeter. It makes all the failure worth it. Every ounce of sweat, every ounce of pain, frustration, anger, the success makes every bit of that worth it. So don't let your failures get you down. Learn from them and keep going. All right, so the new plug out of the other radiator Gonna go in there, but this time it's gonna be coated with anti-seize so that I don't have to deal with this again. At least I hope not anyway. All right, so we're just gonna pour a little water down the radiator. Not quite tight enough.
Yeah. So the grill mounts right here across the front and there's a broken bolt that I'm gonna try and get out. I think we got it. Bingo. What is his name? Oh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten that hold the front grill on. Um, there were only two or three, I think there were two, one there, one here, and then two in the back corner, and one right here in the corner that was even holding the grill on, so it was missing a few. And so we're going to go follow through all these holes with a tap, just to kind of clear out and straighten out the threads if they're angled at all, and go from there, so... And then I follow through with an air gun. And I stick a rag over it so it's not blowing back in my face. And basically grab whatever size bolt's gonna go in there and just double check, make sure it fits nice and all the way in, no, no stopping. Perfect. Now we'll do that to the rest of them. So right behind the radiator, there's a grease zerk on this U-joint, uh, and it's not wanting to take grease. So the plan is to replace it with a new grease circ. I have a collection of grease zerks that uh, some came as a kit, others I've just collected over the years. Let's see if we can't find a good one. There we go. We got the gasket surface cleaned up as best we can. And we're going to make a gasket for this. So what I do is I try and cut it to about the right size. And then you start with holes. Two, two holes to begin with. But I typically like to do four. So in the corners is best. So you take a ball peen hammer, get different sizes. I like the real small ones for the holes and the bigger ones for the edges. So you basically just tap around the edge of the hole and it will cut the gasket material to the exact size that you need in the exact spot you need it. Then we take a bolt with a washer on it. We'll thread that just snug. It doesn't have to be tight. You don't really want it tight. You don't want to ruin the, the material. And you don't want to damage the surface that you're hitting either. Your goal here is to basically just break the gasket material along the edge of whatever it is that you need there to be a cut at. Whether it be a round cut right around the hole or it be an edge cut right around along the edges. 
all four corners. Ah, shoot. All right, so I uh, misaligned that slightly, but this will be okay. This hole here will be on the outside of the gasket, and this hole here will be on the inside of the lower cavity. Why didn't you guys tell me? Come on, you got to tell me these things when they happen. So everything's the same. You basically start with the holes. To absolutely make sure I don't mess that up again, I'm just gonna go to this end and do this far corner. So now we have the gasket in place and it's not gonna move on us. So I like to take the slightly bigger ball peen hammer and work my way around the outside edge first. And you basically just take the round ball peen side and you just kind of find the outside edge and you slightly tap down at an angle Kind of pushing away and work your way around any edges kind of try and pull it tight side to side so that it's nice and flat Sometimes you need a knife. For instance, right here, there's a little raised section. As you can see, it's being cut just to the shape that we need right now. And just like that, we've got the outside. I usually run my finger along it to try and break off any little fuzzies, the little chunks. They're still attached. Next, I like to work my way along the inside. So, you kind of take your finger, find the edge. Start tapping. And the only downside is, is that the inside of this radiator tank is not very... It's not very sharp, the corners, and so I think instead, on this one, I'm going to use a razor, exacto knife, because I can take the blade of the knife and I can run the flat part deeper along the edge of the actual tank and get the gasket cut. All right, now what we'll do, we'll do the bolt holes. All right, now we got them all. Take these bolts out. And work our way around. If you've done it right, most of them will just pop right out. And that is how I make a gasket with a ball peen hammer, an X Acto knife, and some gasket material. And I have no idea what the cost for this gasket is or the, ga the gasket that goes on the top. I, I didn't even look because. Number one, I'd have to figure out where to get it, and then I'd have to get it, wait for it, 
and it's just much easier to have gasket material on hand and then it can make whatever gaskets I need and so that's what we did here so yeah now that we got that ready to rock and roll we're gonna start putting the radiator back together I've decided to use Permatex Aviation Forma gasket on the seals for the radiator. It's a very good for rough surfaces like this. So what you do is you basically apply a thin even coat to both surfaces. Now I apply it to the gasket. Now you let it set up for a couple of minutes and then you apply them together. Radiator reassembly time. So these bolts that we're holding the radiator together are in really rough shape. Some of the threads are just totally stripped. Some of them, they're just missing a bunch. So my plan is to replace them with brand new bolts and brand new lock washers. Time for an upgrade. Alright, there's a broken bolt in one of the side uh, panels for the radiator. Let's try and get that out. That's how it's done. New coolant hose on this one too. I should have put this on earlier. We got this uh, radiator installed. Let's see if it holds water without leaking. Well, there's a leak, but only because I filled it up with water. 
too far. So <laughs> it was just overflowing over the top. Don't actually have a leak, but it is good to know that I've got it all the way full and I haven't seen any leaks. I'm gonna dry this up and then keep an eye on it. hydraulic leak right where the U joints go into the hydraulic pump and so I need to figure out what seal that is to replace it so if you know what seal that is I'd love to know let me know in the comments or send me an email the other thing is this what is this it like it feels, it looks like it should be bolted in. It's got some sort of a fitting here. Yeah. So if you know what that thing is, definitely let me know. I'd like to figure it out because it doesn't look right. And I mean, it's loose. And there's a couple holes in it, plus this fitting. So, I'd like to figure that out. All in all though, she cools perfectly, stays co as cold as can be. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed the process, enjoyed the progress, and there'll be a lot more to come with Old Red. Pretty soon we're gonna move this baby out of here.